There are 30 techniques in one kata. Three stances. Eight punches. Give or take about 10 self-defense techniques and about three or four hand movements. Um, first one is walking stance. Walking stance. Remember from orange, from the square horse stance to the right foot back horse stance to the left foot back horse stance. The next step is the walking horse, or the walking stance. Not a horse stance, a walking stance. Okay, if you go to your walking stance, you're gonna pivot both feet towards your opponent. You can spread your leg out about a foot length and a foot length. Sideways. Legs are bent, front knees bent, back leg is locked. Hands are up in front of you or on your belt. For the stance, and for this belt, we'll put your hands on your belt. Walking stance from the side, legs are spread nice and deep. His back heel is on the floor if possible. Front knee is bent. Walking stance on the right side. Walking stance on the left side. Left leg is back and locked, front leg is up and bent, hands on the belt, shoulders square. Walking stance. L stance. L stance. The L stance is very similar to a horse stance. The only difference is our front foot is towards your opponent. Shorten up. The back leg, so you're standing directly over the back leg, and the hand guard remains the same, but your feet should line up. Ankles your ankles should line up. L stance. Okay? You've got about I'd say a 60-40 weight distribution going on here. 60 on the back leg, 40 on the front. Short stance, good, quick front kicks. That's number two, the L stance. L as in Lima. Number three, ground fighting, A through C. There are three types of ground fighting that you can do from a fallen position. Ground fighting A. Ground fighting A. Unlike falling, where you land with the body flat, Ground fighting, you're going to prop yourself up because you've already landed and you've already taken the shock out of the fall. You're going to prop up on your elbow. You're going to bring your front foot in. You're going to leave your front foot. You're going to bring your bottom foot in. You're going to bring your front top foot. Turn it slightly on an angle. Your hand up is in front of your face. This hand is your support. This hand is your guard. This foot is basically staying out of the way. This foot is for attacks. Okay? Ground fighting A consists of moving in a circle to track your opponent. It's like tracking A and B except you're on the ground. In your arm. Okay, it's tracking A. Pivoting to follow your target. Ground fighting A. Ground fighting B is moving from side to side to beat an opponent running around behind you. Okay? Ground fighting B. Notice, I'm not leaving my groin open to the attack when I switch sides. Quickly and effectively. Okay, roll your legs. That's why you keep this leg at an angle so the other one can roll right over. Okay, ground fighting B can be done while using ground fighting A. Okay, never leave your groin exposed for more than half a second. Shouldn't be taking that forever to get over there. Ground fighting B. Ground fighting C is the escape. Ground fighting C. Kick. Plant. Kick. Step. Step. Once again. 
ground fighting C is the escape. Side kick with your front leg. Plant, knee down, all fours, other shoulder, rear kick. Step, step, cover. Ground fighting C. Ground fighting C. A is pivoting, B is rotating, C is the escape. Rear elbow, rear elbow. An attacker is in your inside rear quadrant. Doing steps. One, pack your arm up. Parallel with your head. Two, extend back. Three, bring it down. At the same time, you're looking backwards. One, two, three. Opponent is right here. One, two, three. Hitting this part of your arm, not the elbow. This part of your arm. Rear elbow. One, two, three. Opponent must be in close for this technique. You shouldn't be reaching for this one. Inverse back fist. Inverse back fist. Rear hand punch. Extend. Cover. Drag across. In steps. Bow step. Pivot. Extend with the rear hand. Strike your target, drag across, back down. When you bring it up, you want to bring it up with this shape in mind here. Okay? This gives you a little bit more power, a little bit more swing with your arm this way. You want to, you want to stay away from the big John Wayne punches with this one. Okay? It can be real slow if you do that. You bring it out and across. Inverse back fist. Steps, bow, cover, cock it up, extend, break through, back. One, two, three. Inverse back fist. Palm heel strike. Palm heel strike. It's with the heel of your hand. Right here, thumb is in, fingers curled back, okay? Striking with a flat right here. Not with the fingers, you'll break your fingers if you hit here. Palm heel strike. Set the corkscrew you punch, except you're hitting with the palm of your hand. This is a pushing technique. A lot of power can be put into this because you're not wrist. You're not breaking your wrist as you would in a straight on punch sometimes. Sometimes you can really mess up your wrist. If you catch it wrong, you've got a lot of variables in here that you can mess up. This is straight. You won't break your knuckles because you're hitting with flesh. Soft palms. But it's not going to be soft when you hit them. Palm heel strike. All your power rear hand punches, you're going to add a bow onto the front foot done slowly. And quickly, for speed, you're going to lose the bow and you're going to pivot or a directional step you. Okay, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing slow, constant power bowl, that'll get you back there. Front chop. Front chop. When you do a chop, flatten your hand. Okay. Thumb is in and down. Corrugate your knuckles. Corrugating your knuckles is pushing your knuckles down, flat. Okay? This does is this tenses up these knuckles right here. If your knuckles are bent in, you bend up like this and you squeeze, your hand has no rigidness, it's no flexible, it's all flexible and loose. If you push your knuckles down, your hand gets corrugated, it gets rigid. Okay? You want to hit right in here with the front hand chop. So like a back fist, the 
front hand chop comes out to the side first, cocked up, extend to the throat. Stay away from the teeth and the nose on this one. You can really rip up your, you can really rip up your, rip up your hand. Also, be careful with the throat because you could kill a person. Okay, this is the lethal technique. Cock it up, extend, and back. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Try not to leave your hand extended for long. Once you bring it back to number three here, close it up. Front hand chop. Again, quickly, speed is always of the essence in the sport. Okay? From speed comes power. From correct form comes speed. When you on this form, you're gonna modify a little bit the more speed you put into it, coming straight out. Again, watch the hyperextension on your arm. With the back fist, you can hyperextend your arm very easily. Okay? With the chop, you can also do the same thing, but your arm is at a different angle. The wrist is turned over. You still can mess up your arm though if you go out and back. Again, out and back, not out and back. Remember, hit three target, front hand chop. Rear hand chop, rear hand chop. And upper palm, same part of your hand you're hitting with. Again, your knuckles are corrugated. Again, your palm and your fingers all line up and your thumb is in. Okay, rear hand chop. Number one, cock up the chop so the back of your hand is on your ear. Number two, Pivot and bow. Number three, extend and bring your hand across. Protect your face. Back to the stance. One, two, three. One, two, three. A lot of power. If you just swing in here, you're going to get a lot of power, especially if you do it smooth and flowing. Rear hand chop. One, two, three. Use it to the throw. Slap, slap. Open hand technique. This time you're gonna uncorrugate your knuckles about a quarter of an inch. Not like this. You just corrugate it for a chop. Tip your fingers, keep your thumb flat, make a little dish with your hand. You're going to catch a pocket of wind on the skin. Okay? This is to the face. This is a stunning technique only. Stunning only. Most people don't expect to be slapped in the face before you, you punch them or kick them. It's a very good way to stun your technique, to stun your opponent. Same as the rear hand chop, except for the hand position. One. Cock it up. Okay? Open palm. The slap position, not the chop position. Slap. Two, bow, and extend. This time, hand is vertical, not horizontal. Stopping at the target. So you're slapping to the target and back. One, two, three. Be careful with the follow through in this one. Most people have a tendency to go way off balance, exposing their ribs and the outside of their head. This one you're going to have to put a little play onto it. Come around, okay? I'm going to be quick with it though. Slap. Side hammer fist. Side hammer fist. A front hand power technique. You don't get a lot of power techniques with the front hand because your front hand doesn't have all the muscle strength that your rear hand does with the cooperation of your shoulders and your heels, your hips and your feet. Okay? Most of your front hand techniques are going to be weak and fast. Front hand side hammer fist is very powerful, especially if done correctly and fast. One, cock it up like a back fist. This time, instead of 
fist perpendicular to the floor, fingers are parallel to the floor. Two, extend through the target. This time you're going to hyperextend your arm. Okay, and you drag it across about a foot. Three, bring it back. This little extra foot may leave you open for a quarter of a second, but it's going to give you about 50 pounds more pressure than if you stopped here. Okay, it's not a snapping, it's a ripping. You rip through the target. Side hand movements. One, two, three. Again, make sure you cock it up though. Get that swing in there. Side hand with this. One, two, three. A little slower, a lot more powerful. But you gain in power, you're losing speed. It's often the case. Power elbow. The inside and the outside elbows are with the front hand. The power elbow is with the rear hand following the same principles as the inside and the outside elbows. Coming parallel to the floor, this time instead of ripping through, you're pushing. Okay? It's a push strike to the face, to the neck, to the chest, so plexus, wherever. Okay? Anywhere in the upper, upper to mid torso. Power elbow. Full step on this is most important because it gets you the recoil action so you don't fall over. Okay? First thing you're gonna do, pivot into a bow. Cover yourself. Extend. Forearm straight. Okay? Not like this. Like this. Straight out. Number one, bow, extend. Two, back. This one you can reach on a little bit because you've got the bow to pull you back. Okay? If you want to reach on this one, I wouldn't say more than a foot. No more than a foot. The person has to be right up on you anyway for you to do this. Bow, extend. And I'm still losing my balance and that wasn't even a foot. Okay? For ripping through power elbows, you're going to pivot your front foot or directional step. Okay? Where you rip through, catch with the elbow. This one you're catching with the forearm, on the bone. Power elbow. Power knee, power knee. A rear leg strike from here back with your leg, okay? Not with the tip, from here back. This is more or less for a torso strike. Okay, two steps. Step to the outside of your opponent or the inside. Step to the front, outside corner of your body. In the front is my outside. I'm gonna step this way, front outside corner. Okay. Try to keep your foot 45 degrees. Don't turn it straight ahead. 45 degrees. Grab your opponent's shoulders. Pull them into your knee. Okay, right here. He's coming down, the same thing you're bringing your knee up. So actually you're going to meet flat like this, not like this. You're just dragging your knee through him. That's why it ends up like this in the technique. So, power knee. Okay, done quickly. Power knee. Very, very lethal kick. Be careful, it's called deadly force. Anything with the knees and the elbows is always deadly force, especially to the ribs. You can puncture a lung with these ribs very easily, rupture their kidneys, burst their spleen. If you hit them in the back, you're paralyzed. Be very careful with these. Inside the outside crescent kick. The inside to the outside crescent kick is your first lateral upward chamber kick. Okay? It's a snap kick done from side to side. Inside to outside crescent kick, I'll demonstrate it first, go through the steps. Okay, inside.
inside to outside crescent gear. I'm going from my inside to my outside. Step number one, directional step towards your target. Number two, chamber, a snap kick, 45 degrees off your target. If my target's here, I'm gonna chamber my snap kick not more than 45 degrees. Sometimes you can chamber it a little better off of 45. 45 sometimes is too much. So here's my target. It's about, let's say, 30 degrees. Awesome. Okay. Number two is extent, is a chamber. Number three is the extension. Number four, get across. Number five, back down. One, two, three, four, five. Choppy like that is not going to get you any power and you'll fall over. You have no balance. Okay? You have to speed it up, combine it together. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? It's a cook, it's a kick that does the damage. But the snap and the way you chamber your leg gets it there. Okay? This alone has no power. It has the speed and the snap necessary, but it has no power. Why? Because you didn't bring it from back here. Much more power. Okay? Inside to outside crescent kick. Again, one, two, three, four, five.
snap it. Taking your leg and swinging it around will get you no power. Okay? You're just taking your leg, you might as well take your leg off and hit him with it because it's going to do as much good. You must snap your leg. This chamber is a snap kick, so do the snap kick and just drag it across. Okay? Snap. It just looks like I'm taking my leg and swinging it across. Outside to inside crescent. Rear kick. Rear kick. It's for opponent directly behind you. Your feet are together. Okay? I'm talking not any farther than that. Rear kick. Number one, hands on your belts. Your feet are straight ahead. Number two, you're going to look and catch your opponent out of the corner of your eye. You're only going to see a shadow. Here's where my shadow starts. Okay? I can see this far with my head turned this far. Okay, you don't have to see them, all you have to see is their image in your eye. Either way, you should be able to cover a whole 180 degrees behind you. Look, extend your arms up in front of you. Pack your leg up. Not an extractive chamber, a three-quarter chamber, okay? A neat pointed chamber, straight ahead. Some people call this the diamond. Point it, extend, out, foot straight down. Like the chamber, down. The higher your chamber, the better the kick, the longer it takes to get out there. Okay? For speed, the diamond. For power, the snap kick chamber. So the rear kick, quick. Okay, this is usually going to take out their knee or their groin. You're hitting. Right about here, on your, on your opponent. Right about there, okay? One comes up, good, kick. Don't come up. Explode your groin, grab your knees. Push kick. Out of power, out of power. Rear kick. Parry, parry. Parry is your first hand self-defense movement in this belt that doesn't require an opponent to demonstrate. I'll explain, okay? The parry in itself is simple hand movement, all right? For this parry, all you're doing is just stepping out of the way and blocking. If someone comes in with a punch, straight at your face. You're gonna step to their outside, extend your arm, and push, okay? This is a parry. This is an inside block. It's a parry. Okay? You're controlling it. You're redirecting it. You're not stopping it. An inside block is for someone who does this and you block it. Okay? A parry is for someone who comes in straight and you redirect it. You must get your body out of the way. You must step out of the way. The best way to beat a punch is not to be there when it's there. Parry. Quick. Okay? Duck. Either side. Oh, let it come by. It doesn't hurt to drag it along. Okay, cover your whole face. See that? You're not stepping towards your point. You're just stepping out. You're riding in your stance. Okay? You're putting yourself almost at a square horse stance to your point. Number 17. Handshake is for a normal handshake, but sometimes come up and you're squeezing your hand real tight. I'm gonna get a good angle here, so you can see it. Okay, right about there. Guys, you squeeze your hand real tight. First thing you're gonna do, you're not gonna twist it over like this, I'm just showing you. You're gonna cut your fingers, okay? This takes the pressure off your hand. If you leave your hand tight, and he's your knuckles are corrugated like the chop, your hand is gonna squish, okay? Like that, and that's what really hurts when they start playing with the knuckles like that. You move your hand in, and they can flex. So you squeeze your hand, you cup your hand, okay? You're going to roll your knuckle or your thumb across the first joint here. You're going to take your hand and you're going to flick your thumb up. Pick your thumb up so you got it wedged in between this finger and your thumb. You're going to step in, put your hand on top, push down. So it's going to go straight down with the whole thing. So done quickly. He squeezes. Squeeze, cup, 
and then down. Okay, handshake. Again, just like this, squeeze, squeeze, step, and break. Standing knee, standing knee. The guy comes in for a push, okay, to the chest. Simply grab the wrists, lean back to the groin. Just pick the knee up. That comes in, grab the knee, standing knee. Wrist lock A through C. A through C. A. A. He grabs straight across the wrist. He's going to pull you towards him. You're going to step, headbutt, elbow, grab, knee. Again. Pull you towards you. Headbutt to the head. Elbow across. Back of the head. Knee to the sore or the torso. B. He grabs across the wrist. You get a cocky, he's gonna pull you towards him, he's gonna extend the kick into his side, into his stomach. Okay? Can't get it up in time, go to the knee. Be careful with the knees, you can't fix them. You break them, you're never gonna have a send again. Wrist lock, C, grabs you across. You see this a lot of times when guys grab their girlfriends, they're gonna pull them away. He comes and grabs you like this, he's gonna pull you towards him, with him. Simply, towards the thumb, cover up. Wrist lock, A, B, and C. The shuck. The shuck is for a push and you step back. You get pushed and you step back into a stance. So he's basically doing this and you're going to step back into a stance. So he's going to push me. I'm going to step back. I'm going to step in. Break the collarbone. Take this hand, cup it on the back of his neck, pull, forearm strike, put it on his lip, push him away, step back. Again. Step, pop, hit, strike away. That's shuck. Step, shoulder grab A and B. Your opponent is going to come up, he's going to grab it from the side, and he's going to strike at you. Okay? Forcing the arm in the back of the back of the tricep. Grab, slow motion, and slow motion. You're gonna grab, you're gonna pin. Pin his hand down so he can't take it off again. Step back out of the way. Bring your elbow up. If you strike him through your head, bring your elbow up to block the punch. Take your hand, place it on the bottom side of his triceps. Twist the forearm, twist the wrist. Push down and pull up with the wrist and the forearm. Okay, so you're putting pressure in the lever action. Drop down. You could break his arm and you could dislocate his shoulder. B, same thing. This time, step back, break. Okay? More often than not, this is for the guy's got a knife. Snap. Real quick. Push. Push is for a simple, guy comes up, pushes you, especially to push him back. Okay, you fall back. You step with the push. When you do the push, you have to extend your arms quickly. And recoil him quickly. Hitting with the palm heel strikes, right through the middle of his shoulders. You're gonna hit in slow motion, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna hit him, his head's gonna come down, reach up and grab the back of his neck, knee to the face. He's gonna get him through. Okay. Quick. Pop. Grab. Tiger claw. Tiger claw is for an opponent coming in with a step and a punch. You block. Grab the groin. Elbow to the head. Strike to the head. Strike to the base of the skull. On this side. So step and punch. Block. Grab. Elbow. Strike. Strike. Try one more time quickly. Tiger claw. Rear choke throws A and B. A and B. A, the opponent comes up, grabs it from behind. You're going to drop to your knees. I'm not going to throw him in here because it's all cement. But what I would do, he's got me like that. I'm going to grab his arm, drop to the ground. Be careful when you land, 
don't land with your toes like this, you break your toes. Land as much surface area on the ground as possible so you spread the blow. Okay, he'll come flipping right over. Reach choke through A, grab, drop. Right away. Reach choke through B, he grabs you, you're gonna grab, you're gonna bend your knees, you're gonna pull him onto your back, you're gonna get him in the air, at the same time, you're gonna pop your legs and throw your arms up. Okay? From the side. All I have to do is pull my arms down and throw them over. It doesn't take a lot to get them on your back and get them over your center, center of gravity. You're choke through B, grab, pop. Put a little slide in your feet. Two hand rear choke. Pony comes up and grabs you from behind. It's the same as orange belt, around the neck. You step, wrap, both hands. Elbow strike, place your hand behind your head, knee, bring it down, elbow, go up. Full Nelson. Pony gets you into full Nelson. You're gonna cinch his hands. Step, get him off balance, twist, and throw. So you cinch, step, throw. Full Nelson. Two hand with pedal grab. If one grabs you, he's gonna shake you, throw you down, whatever. Okay, you're gonna wrap around and drop at the same time. So it's gonna be wrap and drop. You're gonna do it quickly. Take him down. Put in pressure right here on his forearms with the bottom of your arm. Take him down, pop up with the elbow. One more time. Two hand lapel grab. Front bear hug. Your opponent comes up and grabs you around the waist from the front. Your arms are free. Fix your butt. First thing you're gonna do, head butt to the nose. He drops you, because he just broke his nose. You're gonna grab his ears. Okay, on the way down, step back, knee, throw him down on the ears. Break his neck. Last one, darkness. Darkness, your opponent's coming in with a roundhouse. Punch. The block, cover his eyes. Punch to the groin. Step in, place your hand on the solar plexus in his eyes, and push. The other angle. Lock, cover the eyes, groin, step, push. This push should really extend. The last one. Say something. Say something. You guys want to uh, throw on some pads, come on over, show me your seal training when you get done? Whatever. Still going. Sure. <coughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, it is still going. <laughs> Maybe if I stop. Yeah, it's still going. Rear choke throw A. You're what, 6'3? He's 6'2. I'm 5'8. Barely. Now, as you can see, I can't see over him. So what he's going to do, he's going to throw me. Normally, I'd be throwing him because people know my size, I'll grab his size. But just to prove how effective this is, this is his second time trying this, he's going to throw me. Rear choke throw A, remember, drop and pin. Rear choke throw A. One more time. I can't hold out to him. I can't keep him up. It's too much weight to be holding forward like this. Your choke throw A, again, is a little bit modified because of his height. But what I'm going to be doing on him is a top choke. If he bends down a little bit, bust down, you can see his head. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to run up on top of him. I'm going to grab him like this, okay? But I'll be up here and doing that. When he grabs me, with a rear choke throw B, he's going to take my arms and grab me and bend his knees. He's going to pull down and pull my arms down. So it's going to like this, grab, pop, okay? This sets me in a good stance. If I'm grabbing him, it says, okay, I, I got him now. When he pops up like this, it pops the wind out of my stomach, gets me off my feet, way off balance. Now I'm coming forward. All he has to do now is either A, tip his head, I'll fall over him, or B, take my hand and then slam me down. The root choke throw B from the top choke to the top. Remember, it's different for people my size doing it on people my size. Rear choke throw B. He 
He's going to lose his balance a little bit, but it's a hell of a lot better than getting choked to death. One more time, quickly. Okay? Just remember how to fall if you get thrown. Rear choke throw B. Towing is a good way to recover from a push or a fall. Okay? Mostly it's from a push though. You get popped from behind, you want to have a way to get out of it without just taking a nosedive into the cement. Beginner stumbling starts off in an elephant stance or a three-point stance, okay? You got three hands down or two legs and a hand, okay? First thing you're gonna do, take the hand that's free, you're gonna swing it between this hand and here, okay? Not over here, not over here, right here, okay? You're gonna come down on your shoulder and your head, right? It looks easy, but it's really not. <laughs> Again, shoulder, land like you're supposed to in the fall. One side down, one side up. Try on the left side. Drop, okay? Keep your head off the ground when you roll it. It's really hard to explain, you almost have to do this one to know it. But when you drop your hand, first thing you want to do is you bend your knee, okay? You're going to take this hand and duck it as far through as you can, making this shoulder as low to the ground as possible. Take your head, put it between your shoulder and your foot. Your shoulder and your foot. Drop your hand through, pulling your body around, kick off your back leg and coming down, okay? Always come down into a stance or into a, a falling stance, or which means basically you're on your side, one leg's up, one leg's down, okay? That's tumbling beginners. Advanced tumbling, there's no intermediate. Advanced tumbling is from a standing position, okay? If you get pushed from behind and you want to fall out of it, you have to learn how to fall from a standing position. So, you push from behind, take a step, whatever foot you want to do. Now you're going to go from here to beginner's tumble. And recover. Okay? This one you're going to stand up on when you come up. Face your opponent. That's the technique. That's tumbling, okay? Not this, that's just a step to get there. Advanced tumbling is from a standing position. Standing, step, up. Watch, watch from behind. Step, push, up. That's tumbling. set two is a combination of all the movements from beginning to end of the belt. I've taken out a few ones that didn't apply, but I put them all together so it, it did flow, okay? It's mostly a lateral thing. You're talking a straight T here. It's a T form, what I call it. You go up, you go back, and you go sideways, okay? This is indicative of most Taekwondo forms in that they're all straightforward shots, okay? Either side to side, left and right, squares or T's. It's rigid and it's straight, but it does have some flowing motions. The tumbling and the crescent kicks all flow, but they all flow within a certain direction. I'll do the numbers first, and then I'll go through it step by step without the numbers. Again, whenever you do a form, you say the name before, and you say the name after. Locking set two. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. One, two, three, 
23, 24 blocking set 2. Each blocking set covers a certain amount of motions to a certain amount of the means. When you look at a kata, you're fighting multiple opponents. You always have to consider where your opponents are. Most times you're fighting four sides. Okay? Later on you're going to flow into five, six, twelve sides. Right now, four sides. Again, blocking set two. 